Notre Dame may have had its worst football season in school history, but the basketball squad may do the university very proud come March. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you in the paint. The first Monday edition of the year, each and every week, with a fresh edition each and every Monday. Just me breaking down a couple of the bigger schools and some of the bigger stories, but also some of the mid-majors to keep on your radar as we go through the next couple of months. That way you'll know what they've done when it comes time to fill out your brackets. But let's begin with one of the bigger stories, and that being the Fighting Irish. Last year, a sixth seed in the NCAA tournament, but became the first team to lose to a current school from the Big South in a non-opening round game since 1977. But with the run the Irish are on, probably should expect bigger things. Ten consecutive wins after a 2-2 two two start and have remained perfect at home. A 30-game home winning streak, longest in school history, and a lot coming from inside. Sophomore Luke Herringotti and senior Rob Kerr's last year combined for 23 points and 14 rebounds a game, but this year, the duo up to 32 and 18 per game. And Herringotti has been spectacular. Scored double figures in 12 straight games and has seven double-doubles, including career highs with 29 and 16 against West Virginia last Thursday. But the Irish, not the surprise team in the Big East, out to a 2-0 conference start. That's DePaul. After a 4-7 run through their non-conference schedule, the Blue Demons opened up with two home wins against then number 17 Villanova and Providence, a school also with tournament hopes. We'll see if they can take down three consecutive Big East teams, top Big East teams, when they take on Georgetown at home on Tuesday. Now for the unbeatens. There are six remaining as of Monday, January 7th, top four teams in the nation, and then there's Vanderbilt and Ole Miss from the SEC. Both off to the best starts in their school's respective history and both with good wins. Not Cupgate schedules before going into the SEC. Run and Rebels 3-0 against teams in the RPI Top 50, including Clemson. And Vandy also 3-0 against the Top 50, including Saturday's win against UMass. Both start SEC play on Wednesday and Ole Miss with its toughest game of the season at Tennessee. Now, one of the teams the Run and Rebels have beaten is Winthrop, last year's Big South champ and NCAA first round winner this season decided to take out one of the toughest schedules in the nation currently listed as seventh toughest schedule in the country all to get ready for conference play but have been very inconsistent wins against miami georgia tech and akron but recent losses to marshall and mount st mary's they'll most likely be nine and six heading into conference play with game one being against last year's runner-up high point what has happened to Southern Illinois, a school you've grown accustomed to seeing in the NCAA tournament six consecutive years and in that span an average of nearly 26 wins per season. But Chris Lowry's team may need to win the Missouri Valley or at least come close to make it a seven straight year. Last year a four seed and a sweet 16 team, the Salukis this season six and eight and just two and five in the last seven. To their credit, the last three losses all against RPI top 50 teams, and they do currently have listed as the sixth toughest schedule in the nation. But also this season, they have losses to St. Louis and Western Michigan. They do have two good wins, though, on the resume, Mississippi State and St. Mary's out of the West Coast Conference. And then there's George Mason, the name synonymous with Cinderella, a run from being one of the last teams chosen in the 2006 tournament all the way to the Final Four, but Jim Laranega's squad no longer sneaks up on people. In fact, really, nobody does from the Colonial Athletic Association after VCU beat Duke in last year's first round. But the Patriots may be the only team with a possibility of an at-large bid this season. Not that everyone else's record in the Colonial is that bad. It's just that George Mason, at this point, the only team in the conference with key wins. Earlier this season, the Patriots beat Dayton and, to this point, are still the only team to do so. Also beat Kansas State and South Carolina on a neutral floor. But they need to avoid bad conference losses like the one they suffered last Wednesday at Georgia State. Folks, that's how we'll do things in the paint on Mondays. It kicks off our college basketball coverage for the week with Parrish's three-pointers on Wednesdays. In the paint with Bill Raftery on Thursdays and a breakdown and preview of some of the best games of the weekend hitting the website on Thursdays as well. Those with Clark Kellogg and Steve Lapis. So a full plate of coverage all season long, all leading up to the NCAA Tournament and the Final Four in San Antonio. Folks, have a great week. I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.